Atlee, Destiny, River, McKenna, Acacia, Lively. These are some of the names that have recently been pinned on defenseless infants. Where do they come from? Who knows? Who knows what parents are thinking these days? I mean, seriously, what are they thinking? Expectant parents have put a lot of pressure on themselves to come up with the perfect name for their child. Baby name books and websites tell you about all different kinds of names and some of the meanings behind the names. They also give you clues as to what maybe some cruel nicknames may be in the grade school yard if you pick that certain name. They also have, parents also consider how the name sounds with their last name and whether it's a family name or whether that trendy name they're considering is still going to be cool when the child enters middle school. Of course, there are some names that are completely vetoed by one of the parents. You know, oh, I knew a kid in grade school like that with that name. And that kid smelled all the time and had smeary glasses. No way. Or, oh, I knew a guy in college that way. He was a real sleazeball. No way we're going to name it that. Name him that. Many parents want to name their child with that special name, that unique name. And it seems like celebrities have uh, come up pretty recently with some uh, unique names. I mean, Frank Zappa famously called his daughter Moon Unit and his son Dweezel. Of course, uh, Gleneth Paltrow named her daughter Apple. And JC and Beyonce named their child Blue Ivy. And then Tom Cruise named his daughter Surrey. Oh, and then there was the one, the, the actor um, Jason Lee named his son Pilot Inspector. There should be a law, shouldn't there? Maybe parents put too much pressure on themselves to come up with a perfect name. As Shakespeare famously wrote, what's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name smells just as sweet. And that may be true for flowers, but is it true for humans? Sure, if you call a rose by some other name, it would smell as sweet, but names do make a difference. I mean, it's difficult to imagine Marion Mitchell Morrison as the quintessential cowboy, but John Wayne? Now that's a cowboy name. And would Peter Hernandez have been as exciting of a halftime Super Bowl show as was Bruno Mars? Or would uh, actress um, Elena Vasilineyev Miranov be an Academy Award winner if she hadn't changed her name to Helen Mirren. Would Reginald Dwight be as popular as Elton John or Robert Zimmerman as influential as Bob Dylan? Names make a difference. Names are important in the Bible as well, and sometimes people had their names changed, like Abram and Sarai, who had their names changed to Abraham and Sarah when God promised that they would be the parents of a great nation. They had a son named Isaac, which means he laughs. Because they laughed when God said that in their old age, they would finally become parents. Jacob, their grandson, got in a wrestling match with God. And after a night of wrestling with God, he changed his name to Israel, which means one who struggles with God. Jesus didn't call one of his disciples by his given name, Simon. Instead called him Peter, the rock long before Dwayne Johnson picked up and used that moniker. 
of all the pressures Mary and Joseph had on them as brand new parents, naming the child wasn't one of them. An angel of the Lord came to Joseph and told him, You will call him Yeshua, Joshua, or Jesus in the Greek, which means Savior, because he will save his people from their sins. And so in our gospel lesson, we encounter four names. Joseph, Mary, Jesus, and Emmanuel. Each of these names contains a key for helping us to live as followers of Jesus into the new year. The first name that we mentioned was that of Joseph. Joseph means God will add or God increases. In the Old Testament, we meet one named Joseph, the favorite son of Jacob or Israel. Now, because of the special treatment of Jacob and because of Joseph's own large ego, his brothers sold him into slavery. But through some God-ordained circumstances, Joseph rose up to become manager of the food supply there in Egypt during the time of a devastating famine. This Joseph showed God's increase in his personal life, going from a slave to second in command, and also in his public life, as he rescued the clan of Israel from starvation in their own land. Mary's fiancé, Joseph, also is an example of God's increase when it would have been easier for him to just separate from Mary and from her child, Joseph listened to God and stayed with her. He didn't take things into his own hands and let God work in his life and in the life of Mary and Jesus as well. At the prompting of God, Joseph names the baby Jesus. When threatened, he takes him down into Egypt and stays there until he hears that the threat is no longer there and then travels back to Galilee. Joseph consistently gets out of the way to make room for God to do God's work in his life. He allows God to add to him rather than trying to force his own will, even when he knows that it's going to drastically alter his life. So my question for you as a follower of Jesus is this. Have you made room for Jesus in your life to allow him to add, to enlarge, to increase his plan for your life? And how will that look? How will that increase manifest itself in 2017? Mary is a bit more complicated. If we consider the Egyptian root for Mary, it means beloved or cherished. The Hebrew, however, has a little different meaning to it. The Hebrew word Miriam, from which Mary comes, means rebellion. Now, that may be a cute name for an infant, but that's not a name that you want a teenage girl to have. Any parent knows that it's not good if a teenage girl's name is rebellion. But Mary needs both of those qualities to do the work for which God has in mind. She is the beloved one, the cherished one of God, who when the angel Gabriel came to her said, Hail, you who are highly favored, you are going to carry the mother of God. But on the other hand, that rebellious streak, that ability that allowed her to listen to her inner voice rather than to the voices from other people who were trying to tell her differently will come in handy during her pregnancy. 
that rebellious streak gave her the courage to go visit Aunt Elizabeth and Uncle Zechariah um, when the angel told her to do so. It sustains her in her journey from Galilee down to Bethlehem and keeps her sustained while she gives birth to Jesus in a stable. It gives her the ability to say yes to God's plan, even when she knows it could lead to some dire consequences. So maybe you're more like Mary, a rebelliously courageous follower of Jesus, because you know that God is with you and that God loves you. Rebellion, when it's aimed against Satan or the pressures of this world is not a bad thing. Will this be your attitude as you live in and go into the new year? Jesus. Now you think of all people, God would give Jesus a unique name. I mean, think of some of the names he could have been called. Healer, miracle worker, one who walks on water, feeder of 5,000, forgiver. But God gives him a very common name for the first century Judaism, Joshua. The angel tells Joseph, call him Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins. The name Joshua or Jesus means he saves or he will save us. Of course, the he in Hebrew names always means Yahweh, the triune God. Any Jewish name that ends with an A-H-A or an E-L comes from Yahweh or Elohim, which are Hebrew names for God. First century Hebrews living under the occupation of Roman often gave their sons the name Jesus as a cry for God to save them. Save us, God. It was a way of claiming God's promise that one day he would set them free. But in Jesus, the, me the name takes on a totally different meaning. Jesus will proclaim a new kind of freedom that God is bringing to the whole world. In Jesus' death and resurrection, we receive the forgiveness of sins and are saved through him. This Jesus is different than all the other Jesuses of the first century. He is the fulfillment of God's promise to save us. Just to be clear, Jesus' last name isn't Christ. Christ is a title, the equivalent of the Hebrew Messiah. It would be more proper to say Christ Jesus or Jesus the Christ. He probably was known in his day as Yeshua bar Yosef, you know, Jesus son of Joseph. Or he might have been called Yeshua Tecton, which Jesus the carpenter. But as Peter discovered at Caesarea Philippi, and as we know today, Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He came to save us from our sins and set us free, set us free through our faith and trust in him. Matthew gives us one more name, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Perhaps Emmanuel was his middle name, you know, Jesus Emmanuel bar Joseph. But I doubt it, because middle names were very, very rare in the first century. And yet this name is extremely important for us to remember, especially as we enter the wild blue yonder of 2017. I mean, who knows what it has in store for us? Who knew that in 2016, God would call away 18 members of our congregation? I had no idea that I would be as sick as long as I was in 2016 or that I would lose my mother. Who knows what will happen in 2017? God does. 
And God promises that he will be with us every day of the year. He says, I am always with you. God is with us in Jesus today, tomorrow, and forever. In the midst of joys, in the midst of sorrows, whatever life may bring, we have Emmanuel, God with us. Names matter. And sometimes parents stress out way too much trying to pick the perfect name, the unique name, the stage name. But as we begin the new year, we remember the name above all names, that Jesus saves us from our sins, offering to set us free to live life the fullest as a follower of him. It's all there in the name. Jesus, Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. And now may the peace of God which surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We stand and make